Hello and welcome to Ask the Blowfish, explaining the difference between weasels and stoats. One is a weasel, the other is stotally different. Okay, today's question comes from Jeff Smith, who asks, if the point of evolution is to adapt to the prevailing environment, how come some animals slash birds migrate? Well, Jeff, this is a massive question and it starts with evolution. The thing about evolution is that it is a theory, even though it does exist. We cannot measure it, it's very, very difficult to quantify, and it is driven by something called natural selection. If you do not adapt to your environment, if you have not adapted to your environment, or if you are ill-equipped to your environment, you die, you do not have offspring, and your genes, the blueprints that make up your body, do not get passed on. Now, animals didn't migrate instantly. It wasn't like there was a group of animals in one position and they suddenly wanted to be somewhere else. In fact, animals have taken countless millions of years to get a migration pattern. Think of it like this. If a group of animals live at site A and they have two offspring a year, fantastic. Now, if one of those animals or a group of those animals go from site A to site B, which may be just down the road or over the river or over a mountain, and at site B have four offspring a year, then the site B group is more successful than the site A group. So you can already see that if an area is more preferential, the animals are likely to have more offspring there, and the genes that cause migration will be passed to a larger selection of the population. But why would they come back? Well, this is the key part of migration. If spot B is so good, and is always better than spot A, then what we get is speciation. And we'll end up with two separate species adapting perfectly to those two individual environments. However, if spot B suddenly decreases in preference, say the winter's coming in, or it's gonna flood, or all the flowers go so there's no food, then the animals can remember to return to spot A, which is the perfect place for them. The only difference is, while they were at spot B, they had twice as many offspring as the animals at spot A, therefore the genetic mutation that originally caused that migration is passed on to twice as many offspring in the population. And that's essentially as it starts. And firstly, migration would probably be over very short distances. Now, of course, we know that migration exists over huge distances. Monarch butterflies can go all the way from Canada down to Mexico to migrate. We have caribou in Northern America that have the largest land migration of any animal. We have the Great Plains migration of wildebeest, and they're all for the preferential environment that the animals will find. Okay, I know that all sounds complicated and there's a lot of stuff going on there, but that's essentially the basics of it. You have to remember that we cannot measure evolution, and indeed the idea of migration has been confusing scientists for many, many, many years. Now, Jeff, I could actually talk about this subject all day. In fact, people spend their whole lives talking about this subject, but hopefully I've given you just a very quick insight into just how migration may have started. But always remember, nothing happens on planet Earth unless it's for the success of the species involved. Cop hold of that. So there we are, Jeff. Thanks very much for your question. And everyone else out there scratching your heads, you know what to do. Ask the Blowfish. After a hard day's asking the Blowfish, I like to enjoy a large cup of tea. Mm. So why don't you Click it, link it, and like it.